I have entitled this sermon, Who is He That Forgives Sin? came to me about 3 o'clock in the morning, several mornings ago. And it's just like, this is what you, we all need to hear, this question. Because this question is asked in the Bible several times. Who is he that forgives sin? And why would it necessarily might be appropriate for us today to look at it? Well, if you'll take a look at some of the songs that we sang today, a number of them talked about atonement, if we understand what atonement means and who makes atonement, talked about the blood of Christ, and today happens to be in, in Israel, in the Jewish faith, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, in which the Jews fast. And which we did for years and years, that very same thing, because we want to be, as they understood, what they did on that particular day. In Old Testament Israel, when they had a temple, they took two goats and they took them out and they put the blood upon one goat and they hauled them out. And we'll read a little bit about that. But the question we want to ask ourselves is how much atonement did that bring for the people and how much atonement does it bring for us today and what can we learn from that? Because the center to that question is who is he that forgives sin? And I want, I want to start with the question as it is uh, posed in Mark chapter 2. In Mark chapter 2, Jesus does something that the people don't agree with. And he makes it a comment that they really don't agree with in Mark chapter 2. But I think it goes to show, again, the attitude of God, the understanding that God would want us to have. So let's begin here in Mark chapter 2. And we want to take a look in verse 1 through 12. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, now Capernaum is the north end of the Sea of Galilee, the synagogue there, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered that, that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing him a paralytic carried by four of them. Since they could not get him in, into Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, they lowered the man of the paralyzed man was lying on. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the teachers, and you read in the other account as well in the book of Luke, some of the teachers in Luke, it talks about the scribes, the Pharisees, the lawyers, all of those that come. So we say some teachers, all the basic legal religious leaders, in a way, were there. Some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Now this is a huge problem and a difficulty. I mean, to use the word that he is blaspheming is a huge difficulty. He says, so who can forgive sins but God alone? Now, that's an important point for me to mention here. Because when we think about sin, how is it that we have our sins forgiven? I mean, their understanding, there's only one way to have sins forgiven, and that's God. Now, what's the importance of all of that? One. And number two, what is the importance of sin? And as Jeanette was singing, I was kind of projecting forward to tomorrow and the homeless and her singing and... I was thinking about a number of those things. I was listening to the words and, and thinking about pre presenting maybe something along this line. And because oftentimes we think about people who go to court. And let's say they get off. Or they get probation. Or even if they get sentenced and they do their time, so to speak. Oftentimes, oftentimes not always, even though they know they did the crime, they feel no remorse for it. Well, they got what was coming to them. They deserved it. Or I just got caught. Why it's important here to acknowledge sin. Sin is not just that you've done something wrong. 
and that you got away with it, it's been taken care of, or the lack of recognition. Well, you owe it to me. I'm entitled to that. I, you know, I just stole that because I didn't have it and I should have it. You know, I've been treated poorly, whatever it might be. If we don't acknowledge sin as being sin, we're missing the, the, the God part in all of this, but we're also missing the part of who influences us and who's in that regard, not only our own human nature and the world, but also that we're following another rule of law. We are following a rule of law. That rule of law is Satan's rule of law. He has a rule of law. He's criminality, murderer, and a liar from the beginning. So if you, if you just gloss over it, then, then you fail to realize that you've fallen into his snare and trap. So, but if you recognize, one, there is a God, and that you're looking for forgiveness from God. Not just a judge that says, go, and you're on probation three years, they're off of probation, or, or that, but you're looking to a God who forgives, and how God forgives, and you're also recognizing that what you have done is sin, and who is the author of sin. So that's why this part is important for us to understand. So they ask this question, well, who can forgive sin except God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that what this was and what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say to him, get up, take your mat and walk. But that you may know, now this is the reason, that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And he said to the paralytic, I tell you, Take up your mat and go home. So he got up, he took his mat, he walked off in full view of all of them. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Now, when we begin, what I'm going to hopefully help us to begin to understand, all of us, we've never seen anything like this. When we think about who it is that has forgiven us of sin, we have never seen seen anything like this, nor have we ever experienced anything like this. So, with that thought in mind, why did Jesus come in the first place? Well, let's back up a little bit to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 1, and the, the, it's always nice to involve God and in some prophecy and angelic beings and what God is doing in some of these things because it's, it's important to us to understand that. Matthew chapter 1, and we'll begin here in verse 21. It's, it's, it's a vision that comes to Joseph, the things that are going to happen about the birth of Jesus. And it says verse 21, and it's the Holy Spirit, talks about being conceived of the Holy Spirit in verse 20. She shall give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. A virgin with child will give birth to a son, and they shall, will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So we have a child that's going to be born, who's going to be called Jesus, because it's about prophecy, it's about saving his people from their sins, and Emmanuel, who is God with us. All important in terms of, who is this? You know, who is he that forgives sin? Now, for a moment, let's go back to ancient Israel, the nation of Israel, and take a look at how they, God gave them, a way to, we'll call it, manage sin. Manage sin. Once a year, they were to have, they had a day called the Day of Atonement. This was to make atonement for the people. So in the book of Leviticus, chapter 16, it talks about the atoning, atoning of sin. So we read in verse 4 through 9 these following things. The priest had all the, the garb to do that, that, was, you know, that we've been talking about. We're just going to read a little bit, though, for, for our understanding. Feeling the blues today or tired of life already? Do you have questions about life or need spiritual advice? We can help. Log on to WorldwideChurchOfGod.com or WCGFairfield.blogspot.com and stay connected to reality. The Worldwide Church of God in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, 
and Modesto are located in the San Francisco Bay Area, regarded as the most prosperous region in the United States. We believe Jesus Christ when he proclaimed in Matthew 6.24 that serving God is more important than serving mammon. We welcome everyone to come and worship and fellowship every Saturday at the times listed on your screen and on our website, worldwidechurchofgod.com.